later, he was dead, killed instantly in a head-on collision. A semi-trailer driver from interstate didn't see a stop sign concealed by an overgrown liquid amber. Local residents had been complaining for months about that sign. It was an accident waiting to happen, they said. And now it had happened. The apples rotted fast in the heat. Chapter One Two men and two women sat in the far corner of a cafe underneath the framed photo of sunflowers at dawn in Tuscany. They were basketball player tall, and as they leaned forward over the mosaic-topped round table, their foreheads almost touched. They spoke in low, intense voices, as if their conversation involved international espionage, which was incongruous in this small suburban cafe on a pleasant, summery Saturday morning with freshly baked banana and pear bread scenting the air and soft rock drifting languidly from the stereo to the accompaniment of the espresso machine's industrious hiss and grind. I think they're brothers and sisters, said the waitress to her boss. The waitress was an only child and intrigued by siblings. They look really similar. They're taking too long to order, said her boss, who was one of eight, and found siblings not at all intriguing. After last week's violent hailstorm, there had been blessed rain for nearly a week. Now the fires were under control, the smoke had cleared along with people's faces, and customers were finally out and about again, cash in hand. So they needed to be turning over tables fast. They said they haven't had a chance to look at the menus. Ask them again. The waitress approached the table once more, noting how they each sat in the same distinctive way, with their ankles hooked around the front legs of their chairs, as if to prevent them from sliding away. Excuse me? They didn't hear her. They were all talking at once, their voices overlapping. They were definitely related. They even sounded similar, low, deep, husky-edged voices people with sore throats and secrets. She's not technically missing. She sent us that text. I just can't believe she's not answering her phone. She always answers. Dad mentioned her new bike is gone. What? That's bizarre. So she just cycled off down the street and into the sunset? But she didn't take her helmet, which I find very weird. I think it's time we reported her missing. It's over a week now. That's too long. Like I said, she's not technically. She is the very definition of missing because we don't know where she is. The waitress raised her voice to a point that was perilously close to rude. Are you ready to order yet? They didn't hear her. Has anyone been over to the house yet? Dad told me, please don't come over. He said he's very busy. Very busy? What's he so busy doing? The waitress shuffled alongside them, in between the chairs and the wall, so that one of them might see her. You know what could happen if we reported her missing? The better looking of the two men spoke. He wore a long-sleeved linen shirt rolled up to the elbows, shorts, and shoes without socks. He was in his early thirties, the waitress guessed, with a goatee and the low-level charismatic charm of a reality star or a real estate agent. They'd suspect Dad. Suspect Dad of what? asked the other man, a shabbier, chunkier, cheaper version of the first. Instead of a goatee, he just needed a shave. That he, you know. The expensive version brother drew his finger across his neck. The waitress went very still. This was the best conversation she'd overheard since she'd started waitressing. Jesus, Troy, the cheaper version brother exhaled. That's not funny. The other man shrugged. The police will ask if they argued. Dad said they did argue. But surely, maybe Dad did have something to do with it, said the youngest of the four, a woman wearing a short orange dress dotted with white daisies over a swimsuit tied at the neck. Her hair was dyed...